And since the universe is electrical, and since we are electrical, it means that we, each of us, actually is the universe. We're part of everything. Did you know, for example, that each atom in your body is made up of electrons and protons, and that they orbit, they spin around a neutron? Electron, of course, has a um, negative charge, a proton has a positive charge, and a, a neutron has a negative charge. Now, look up in the sky, or imagine you can. Did you happen to notice that the planets in our solar system are made up of objects that also have positive and negative charges? Again, because the universe is electrical in nature. And they orbit around another object that has a neutral charge. So you've got planets in our solar system that spin around a sun. You've got the atoms in your body, which are made up of particles, positive and negative, spinning around a central core, which also has a negative charge. So my guess is that God decided that whatever worked really well for small things, like atoms, would work equally well for big things, like solar systems. You know, it saves time in the planning stage and you don't have to keep making blueprints. So what about us being part of a giant computer that covers the entire world, the entire Earth? It's Again, I'm not saying anybody planned it, but it's part of our herd mentality. And it's one of the ways the masters control us. For example, when one of us is infected with a mental disease, a mind virus, if you like, and we start talking to other people, we can actually spread this mind virus to other people just by talking to them. We infect them with hate, with worry, with fear, with dread, with despair. I have um, lots of lesbian friends back in the States, and they used to tell me stories about going out to clubs with their friends, you know, gay and straight. And one lady, lovely lady, Miss D, and she really truly is a lady, a real woman. Anyway, Miss D had four young straight girls that she used to go clubbing with all the time. They were her pals, they, you know, palled around town. Miss D would tell me that they would be having a wonderful time in a club, the girls would be hitting on the guys, the guys would be hitting on the girls, to have a, you know, just stuff. Until one bad seed showed up. This one girl, this one straight girl, would show up and she would immediately infect all the other straight girls who had been delightful, fun, having a great time. This one girl would show up and spread what we, uh, I'm trying to think of a nice way of saying it, the American female disease which is viciousness, cruelty, hatred. All of it aimed at men. And when they're not men, no other women. Dear Miss D would then drag her girls away from this mind virus carrier and try to snap them out of the effect. It never worked, of course. And she just had to stop hanging out with them. This same very nice lesbian lady finally gave up on women in California altogether and married a nice older gentleman who just, she's, you know, has loved her for ages. It's a phenomenon nobody talks about, but in Southern California, where I'm from mostly, and New York and various other places, um, women have become so vicious that actually the lesbians are now uh, dating and marrying men. I saw the, uh, the opposite of that in New Zealand, where the women were so vicious that straight men were... Uh, dating other straight men and having homosexual uh, relationships just because they were so darn lonely. Anyway, in the United States, we have another term for the mind virus when it turns nice girls ugly, but it's, it's an obscenity, and I cannot say it on air, but it's very accurate. I can give you the initials. It's F-C-S, and that's as far as I'm willing to go. So, big uh, circle, as we always do. <laughs> so now, where does the concept of free energy come into this? How can you prove this for yourselves? And all of this is actually tied in, believe it or not. Um, the atoms in your body have the same configuration as the solar system we live in. The universe is electrical. We are electrical. We are part of the universe. We are broadcasting energy and receiving energy constantly in the, f in the form of frequency sound. So again, what? This all sounds terribly confusing. What does it possibly have to do with anything else that we've talked about? Try this just for the fun of it.
the concept of free energy, forget about the, the, uh, the euphemism that it, you know free energy equals my, you must be stupid. Just skip that for a second. Try calling it free electrical energy. That might uh, diffuse the programming a little. Now for this one, and you can prove it for yourself. Again, you don't need me, you don't need anybody but yourself. But this one, you need to be kind of handy. Get some friends together, make it a project. What you need to do is get three glass tubes about maybe a foot long, something to seal the ends with tight, and a vacuum pump, and three lengths of very thin, very thin copper wire. Now, used to be a couple years back, there were uh, local supply shops that catered to high school science uh, classes. So you could get all kinds of cool stuff, glass tubes, pumps, vacuum pumps, all sorts of things. I have no idea where you get it today, so you probably have to go online, look at your local hobby shop. So that's what you need. Three glass tubes, about a foot long, something to seal the ends, and a vacuum pump, a little hand pump, not too much money at all, and three lengths of very, very thin copper wire, again, about a foot long. What you want to do is you want to string these three pieces of wire, one wire per tube, down the length of each glass tube. So what you've got is a glass tube with one very thin copper wire in it. You then want to seal the ends of the glass tube and pump all the air out and leave a little valve at the end. So now what you've got are three glass tubes, each of them with one very thin copy, copper wire running the length of it. The ends are sealed, and you pump the air out so they're in vacuum. What you then do is you tie these three glass tubes together lengthwise with a piece of uh, tape or uh, something non-metallic, uh, plastic strap, and then just wait. Watch what happens to the copper wires. If they're thin enough, they will start to glow. Why are they glowing? Because in vacuum, in the space around us, is so much electrical energy, we can actually tap it. This is a very, very, very simple form of an energy tap. Now, if you really are handy, and you've got a couple extra bucks, Try alternating the copper wires with silver and gold. Nothing too fancy. Go to a jeweler, tell them you want 999.9% silver wire or gold wire. Maybe cost you a few bucks. Repeat the experiment. See what happens. Please make sure you're wearing gloves and eye protection. You never know with glass and you know vacuum. So here you have an energy tap that's glowing because it's being powered by the free electrical energy in the vacuum in the tubes. And because these three wires are in proximity to each other, there is a flow. And since the energy, the electrical energy has no place to flow like into your, <laughs> your uh, washing machine, it's going to back up and it's going to burn those wires. That's how much energy is in vacuum around us. So imagine if you take this energy tap and instead of being one foot long, these glass tubes, they're 30 feet long. You hook them in series. You're now powering your whole house with free electrical energy. So, free electrical energy, yes, it's there. We're swimming in it. We're part of it. It's all around us. Now, all you have to do is free yourself. And, of course, the event is here. And please have a plan for that as well. And take your energy tap with you. It'd be nice to have, you know, your electrical blender working after the event. So for all of us here at the 2012 FAD.